Um, I would like first to start by thanking the organizer to giving me the opportunity to speak in this wonderful event. I'm very excited for my first 10 minute talk. So yeah, I'll be, um, so this talk is based on uh, our joint work on uh, the modular space of double frame curve representation. And it is a uh, joint work with Marco Armenta, Thomas Priestley, and uh, Mark Reinecke. And it's a very recent uh, preprint that we shared two months ago. So the motivation is uh, comes from the network. We would like to, um, to have a better understanding of how these objects work. And we would like to, to have a mathematical understanding and how they proceed data in a combinatoric, algebraic, geometric way. And so the motivation start from, uh, from wanting to, uh, to contribute to a better understanding of these objects. So first, um, let me mention that neural network appear as uh, biological ones where uh, they're formed by neuron, biological neuron, chemically connected, or um, also as artificial neural network, which are inspired and simulate the biological ones. And they're formed by uh, artificial nodes, like uh, artificial neurons and uh, connected by weights. And so the way we would like to uh, present these neural networks is as uh, arranged quivers by layers. So the first layer represents the input layer and the layers in the middle represent the hidden ones. And finally, the last column represent the output layers. And the way, um, the way we want to like organize the quiver is that arrows should go from the left to the right and not in the opposite way. And um, we don't allow multiple arrows between two vertices. We only have at most one. And we don't allow um, so arrows in the same column. And um, so we don't allow uh, cycles, oriented cycles. We only allow loops and only on the hidden vertices. So in vertices in the uh, in the middle column. So these uh, are summarized by what uh, Marco and Pierre Marc Jodin describe as neural a network quiver. And it is a connected finite acyclic quiver without multiple arrow. We only allow loops on the middle ones. And there are technical definition of this that appear in their preprint, which is a recent work, which is previous to our work. And as an example, as you can see here, so we have this uh, column, which represent the input ones. We have the hidden ones, and we have the output uh, column. And we, as you can see, the loops are only allowed on the hidden vertices. So this example is kind of summarized the technical condition that we're the condition they put to define what we call network curve. And so we keep this in mind. And so a network, uh, a neural network would be a pair where we take a thin curve representation, a thin curve representation of this network curve, which means we associate a one dimensional uh, complex vector space to every vertices. And uh, we also associate an activation function to every loop, which is only allowed on the hidden vertices. So this is what we, uh, this is how we want to see neural networks. Now I want to briefly, um, briefly discuss how they proceed data before that we move to the categorification. So we have, let's say a set of data, we take one data, let's say. And so the neural network, which is the thin cover representation will send or uh, save uh, the data as a double frame cover representation and it map it to a geometric space that call, which is called the moduli space. That's how it proceeds the data and a double framed cover representation will be is uh, so it's a frame and a co-frame at the same time. The frame that the co-frame was were defined by Reineke in 2008 and it is a triple where we take the framing vector space, a co-framing vector space, 
two non-zero maps, and uh, I think curve representation of only of the hidden curve. So we only represent the vertices which are in the middle. Um, and so this is briefly how we proceed the data. Now, what I want to uh, discuss is uh, the categorification, which is, let's say we fix a quiver, a network quiver. And uh, so now we want to, to take a neural network on this network quiver. So we need a thin, thin representation, thin quiver representation of this quiver. So we have choices. And so this is what we summarize in the network uh, category over this network quiver, having object the thin quiver representation. So one dimensional vector space associated to every vertex. And the arrows given by the morphisms were, um, so if we take two thin quiver representation, the morphism, the condition we want is that if uh, between two vector spaces that represent a sink or a source uh, vertex, we want this map to be the identity between C and C, so the scalar one. And so that's our category. And now um, in the next minutes, I want to discuss properties of this category. So first, let me remind what's a group weed. It's a small category, which means that the class of sets and morphisms are uh, sets, and every morphism is invertible. And if we take only the simple uh, thin curve representation, then uh, with all the morphism between them, so as a full subcategory, then it's form a group we and we use the sure lemma to prove this. So that's uh, one property. Another one is I want to briefly recall or remind you uh, what is a monoidal category before that we discuss the monoidal structure on, on this category, on the network category. So first, to have a monoidal category, we need a tensor product, like tensor product of vector spaces, et cetera, and which should be associative. And we need an identity, which is left and right identity on for this tensor product operation. And if this is commutative, we call it symmetric. And then in this case, we can talk about the Picard group of it, which will be the set of all the representations um, that have inverse so that we can oops, so that we can find an inverse of it such that the tensor product give us this identity and um, for our category if we take the tensor product of thin representations defined by martin in 2008 and then we will get again a thin representation and using this tensor product and by taking uh, so for the identity, we take the representation that has all the arrow being presented by the identity map. I will present an identity, and for this triple will be as will give us the monoidal structure on this category, um, which is an interesting structure. Um, okay, and finally, so we can talk about the Picard group of it, and in this case, it will be the isomorphism classes of the simple object, but with the condition that we uh, don't allow um, the arrow to be zero scalar. And this condition came from the fact that we want an inverse, right? So that uh, when we multiply, we will have a condition that we want uh, the multiplication of the two arrow to be one. And that's why we want it to be invertible, the scalar. So we don't take the zero ones. And um, this group can be identified as a subset of the moduli space that we can find an embedding to the uh, stable representations. Um, and uh, and this, um, well, this result has applications, which, as I said, the, our motivation was to, um, to contribute a better understanding of how neural networks, because neural, neural networks uh, help solving problems in artificial intelligence. And we are convinced that, uh, that Curve representation is a good way to present these networks since uh, it seems that the architecture of how the neurons are connected is more important than the information carried by the neurons. And uh, another uh, reason is that we proved that the backpropagation algorithm factor through, uh, through some maps that we defined through the moduli space. And so it would be interesting to study uh, more algebraic and combinatoric property of this uh, cover representation on even more um, 
algebraic property of the moduli space. Like for example, using toric uh, geometry, and one can study more the algebraic property of this moduli space. And all these, we believe, uh, have good applications. And there are more details, of course, in our preprint. Um, yeah, thank you very much for your attention.